got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he, when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. It's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel. It's pointless. just a pointless entry to a diary, that. It's not because that could be a, 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 like an important bit in like world history. What? The fact that, that people, that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person. This has been going forever. What has? People trying to age better. No, but he's talking about if you're 90. He wants people to look like they're 30. And that's not good, because how, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But, you know, when it's, people, again, it's not a revelation. If I, if, if I like chatting to old people, because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train and someone's old, I'm happier talking to them about... They get up and move after about ten minutes. Well, no, you know, the fact that many of them are infirm and can. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to stay there and listen to this but, one. But yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way because they don't move about as much, so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. Jesus. You know, you're not working as much because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. Actually, it's not been that bad. Whereas if... But you must have started that now. Because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just, well, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time about your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life and things are changing. Oh. <sighs> Keep saying that. No, but but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that <laughs> from 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 that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them, to it's just it's it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on, and all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go right. They might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation was with! <laughs> Why well, you got angry, and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you say you're, you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it would be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down the wrong side then. Either. You did that whole thing and you bollocksed it up again in your brain. I'm just saying, either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Right. So you say, even if, so you're saying it'd be all right to make 78-year-olds look 32 as long as there were some 32-year-olds that look 78, as long as you've got old-looking people. No, but say Can like, I tear this page out? Because <laughs> it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was, I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life-threatening? No. Uh, you know, how long am I going to be out? Couple all the rest days. Of it, right? Now... He As it turned out, it is life-threatening, and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now, he was quite old. He looked about 55, and that reassured me in a way. In a way, it didn't, because he's, he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much, and I kind of thought, I hope you open I don't know what wider. you're talking about. What do you mean? What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked, that is, he, he does that, you know, when he's like, he's tired, so he's going, right, what we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut, he's well, talking this is, like that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you, so you can see. But the people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut. Well, tell them you've got your eyes shut. Just I say know. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh. Had he been reading this? <laughs> Bored stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a... Oh. Do, do you know what I mean? I, or, I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about!
talking about? Intelligent people. Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? You see it, you see <laughs> like, <laughs> that. Uh, who's that bloke of those? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs> he doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no, he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you and they're really posh and they talk and whenever they talk their eyes are shut and they I open. don't know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I've never seen an old educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother opening his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you, know what you're talking about. Steve, have you seen, so, do you know what I mean when people don't sort of open their eyes when they're talking to you and it can be quite annoying because it's like they're saying, I'm not interested about you sat there, I'm not bothered if you're listening or not, I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say. And but it can be quite if, he, if he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it, so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose you. I'm, I'm not having a go at him. Well, I'm like just what? saying he was 50 odd, and I was happy that he was there telling me. <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Looks like the world's fattest man is having an operation to get rid of some of the fat. Yeah. He has to have an iron bed because that's the only thing that can hold his weight. Yeah. There's also a man whose skull has fell out. He's in hospital somewhere. I hate that. It would make me panic. The hospital is busy with people coming in to look at their head. What are you talking about there? That tells us nothing. Right, it's impossible for a skull to fall out. It How are scholars in 10,000 years going to be... What are they going to decipher from that? They can sort of go There's not up. enough incident but, 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 detail. But, but, but how did his skull fall out? Circulation problems. But th answer the question. How did his skull fall out? Fall out of what? He was at home, um, and I don't know if he was combing his hair or something, but it, it come off. What did? <laughs> his skull. What do you mean, his skull? Do you know what the skull is? It's a part of the head. Well, it, no, it's the, it's the structure of the head. It's the bone. Do you mean the top of the skull? This is only useful if you have all the salient facts. Then it would be of interest to us. We could, we could. Well, that, I, that, I couldn't take that on. I'm busy. I'm not going to start looking into stuff in depth. Just get the details. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You're such an idiot. You are the best, oh, idiot in the world. Well, I don't want to be premature, but that entry is followed by, I injured my toe the other day by dropping the toaster. Instead of letting it hit the floor, I tried to catch it with my foot. <laughs> I didn't think I'd done any harm, but my nail looks like it could fall off. I might show it to the doctor when I get my kidney stones out. We could easily get by without nails on the feet. They are more trouble than they're worth. You're so wrong. You're so wrong. I think on the days when cavemen without shoes and animals need nails, I don't think we need them now. I honestly... Because you hear about uh, ingrowing toenails... Right, so that's a problem. Um, you've got to cut them. Um, stuff gets under there and gets infected. Get rid of them, you won't have any of that. As long as you wear shoes. No, you'd have unprotected toes and fingers, wouldn't you? I didn't say on the on the fingers, just on the toes. So why why do you need them on the fingers and not the toes? Because you, st you, use your, you use your hands to do stuff. I've said about toenail out, it'd be good to have it growing on the head. What? Just having like a sheet of it, just, just like a, a nail on the forehead. <laughs> you wouldn't look weird because we'd all have it. I'm not saying. What are you talking about now? I'm just saying we've. I, I don't want to go on about evolution stuff because we've done it all. What but, do you think the skull is for? No, but I mean on the outside, so that when you bang your head, it's a little bit more protection. Like, like people. I mean, you're looking at me like that. Why do you wear a helmet on a bike then? <laughs> because. <laughs> Because the bike wasn't meant to be invented. We weren't meant to whiz along at 70 miles an hour with evolution. I know, but, you, but because life's changing, like you've said, let's But you can't, the... you can't go, let's evolve, let's re-evolve. Okay, let's assume we've got this nail on our head uh, that's growing out of our forehead. So we look like one big thumb. Yeah. Uh, which weirdly, Carl, kind of, I mean, you can almost imagine it looking at Carl now. You can imagine a big nail there. Does the nail great. continue to grow? Do we have to trim the head nail? Uh, yeah, in the same way you get a haircut. Why... Is that preferable in your mind to just wearing a crash helmet in instances where you might have something hit your head? Just because, um, for a start, helmets, you have to carry them around with you. That's one thing that's put me off on the motorbike. Whenever you see someone on a motorbike, mm -hmm. it's all like the clothes you've got to wear. And it's like a big upheaval, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, if you have a car, you can get in with your shorts on, your flip-flops on. A motorbike, it's like, it's yeah. like you're an astronaut or something, and you're only nipping down the road for some milk. Do you know what I mean? So, get rid, what I'm saying is get rid But does of it annoy you having to put shoes on every day and underpants and a, a vest and a, 
I don't know. No, but once they're jacket. on, I'm not carrying them. They're on me. If I had to then take the shorts off for whatever reason and walk around holding them, I'd go, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't like holding a bag. I don't mm. like bags. We carry too much around with us now. I don't like carrying stuff. It's just a, a hassle, isn't it? <laughs> it's just endless things he doesn't want to do, doesn't like doing, doesn't like carrying bags. I Who the hell has a gripe about carrying bags? It's Why just, is that a concern? Because it's it's stuff that's on on. I you. love the way that he wouldn't mind having a nail going out of his <laughs> fucking head, but he doesn't <laughs> want to carry a bag. What's good with it is everybody's got one of these, and but it's it's not going to happen. Carl. And the most important thing in your body, apart from the heart, is your brain. So protect that, not the toes. The toes we can get by <laughs> Please, without the toes. People. But your head's important, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in your head, um, and I know all this just after seeing the the body works thing. I went to see. The, uh, it's a show on where there's a load of, like, dead bodies and that. And, uh, you can see how much stuff's in the body. And it's, there's loads of stuff. There's nothing in there that you don't need. It's all doing stuff. Everything in your well, body. we've been but telling you, you that for years. But you reckon you don't need the toenails? Yeah, that's on the outside. I'm saying everything that's on the inside of your body, right? You don't need the appendix. No, but it, that, it doesn't that depend on what, what lifestyle you have. Well, it's a, it's a hangover of when we uh, probably ate a lot more cellulose and it's... it's. Yeah, well, they, it's they might come back. Things are always coming back, aren't they? So if people start eating them again... What about male nipples? Uh, sort of looks all right, though, doesn't it? Because the chest is quite plain, so with, with nothing on it, you'd go, oh, what's this? <laughs> it just balances it out. I think it looks all right. I think it works. So <laughs> leave it. Um, but what were we talking about? But w wouldn't you rather have um, maybe a little... Uh, like a rib cage around the testicles, because you get a whack in them and it. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um. Not an invention, Carl. It's not an invention, and we can't do it. But. But would you be able to sit down still? Because that's the good thing with them at the moment is movement. <laughs> so it sort of works. But don't they say? Um, they said something about testicles, about the body works thing. Well, they're on the outside. Put yours away, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> You're not one of the exhibits. <laughs> uh, they're on the outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature for the, I think, the Satoli cells to... to, to so work. that's that's an odd design that they had to go there because it is a daft, it's a bit of an odd place to have them. Where would you suggest? Probably, Dangling from the throat? Um, sort of... I want to redesign you, right? You, 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 you can possibly do this now this is something you can actually do probably you could probably have your testicles anywhere so where would you want them you've got a giant forehead nail yeah you could have that it probably wouldn't grow but we could certainly have that, that I, I just mean like because uh, if, if all it's about is temperature you don't yeah. want to get them too hot yeah well they're getting hot down there you're wearing pants and what have you mm. so have them nearer to the outside of the of the body well they are near the outside of the body no but we wear pants over them so you what? wear pants over them because their their testicles and polite society suggest that you don't show your. Yeah, but testicles. that's the odd thing, isn't it? That's what's happened somehow that we've that we've said testicles shouldn't be seen. Well, then just cut a hole, cut a pair of hole in your trousers. If it's only about you know keeping them cool and because they're too hot, why don't you just uh, hang them out your shorts? Because there's too many sort of seats that are shared these days, isn't they? But what I'm saying is. But what are you saying? Where, well, where would, you, would have... you put them? Somewhere like. Um, Sort of under the ears, so it sort of just looks like lobes. So oh. you would redesign your body to have a pair of testicles for hanging lobes. from your ears. And when people are sometimes talking, they do sort of mess with their ears, and they're always saying "check for lumps." More <laughs> handy. <laughs> I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a program about monkeys. <laughs> It's already good. Of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is. Oh, chimpanzee, that's some more shit. This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the program about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth. This was is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in in like the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that's sat on a bridge, and um, a lot of tourists go through the area. No, it's to, a monkey to look at them. who realised that, that if he sits there, he'll get stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. 
Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give it. Oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana, uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give. Yeah, but it's squirrels all learn that. If you don't go, or oh, you wouldn't say, or oh, went to the park. The squirrels waiting at the gate. You have to give them a toll to go in. They don't they're going to give them nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> it is. Do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, in it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water and it was it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not! As it mollusks like down say, it was, on its fucking yeah, luck. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife left it, the kids I went and started hitting the ball. It, and I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... Last <laughs> meal! But it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't leaf, have... It must like a leaf or a, a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love It's leaf. not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of not. that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's... It's not boring area. stuff to them. They're not. I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> When I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. You know, like Sorry, you, you just started miming counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidney's aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. And when, he got to, when I got to about six, he, he served me. What's wrong with that? Again, you are giving one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. the it's about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here, I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know, I was busy counting. <laughs> Looked at what's been going on in the world. There was a human head attached to a seagull's body in a jar. Is that all it says? This is the sort of weird stuff that goes on behind surgery doors. I doubt it ever flew because the head would have been too heavy. Well, of course it wasn't. It didn't happen. It wasn't live. No, but they try this stuff, don't they? That's like that program I watched with a. a well, monkey who has on. ever tried to put a human head on a seagull's body? They've done loads of stuff like that. It's part of us moving on, isn't it? It's what are you talking about? I'm not going to get into arguing about well, science you're wrong. because it's all Don't behind talk closed doors. Shit. How do you think we can change a, a a heart now from another body? You have to try things out. It's trial and error. 
all sorts of weird stuff goes on in hospitals, but we let it happen because it's to help us out in the long run, isn't it? But what, what are they aiming towards when they're going to find out if you can put a head on a seagull's body? What is that, what, what, what are they want to learn and what do they, how do they want to apply that knowledge? A new heart it is obviously for a reason, it saves a life. Yeah, what is this, to, to save money on transport? Instead of getting a bus pass, you go, can, you, can I put my head on the seagull's body? I go, well, it won't work. Well, we'll try it. <laughs> yeah, but it is, there is odd things like that. Like, uh, I saw a fish the other day, right? right. And, uh, honestly, it's the weirdest thing. It was just like a blob with a face. <laughs> now, I would never have said, yeah, let that swim about. I'd have killed it from day dot. I would have gone, get rid of it. <laughs> oh, God! Under what circumstances would you have killed that from day dot? Oh, wh I'm just saying, looking at it, I'd say, that does not work. And it looked sad. It looked like it didn't want to be about. Have you got her number? <laughs> Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital this week because previously you'd had. I've been treatment. in and out. Honestly, I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And uh, yeah, you had so kidney stones, all right? No, no, but seriously. Monday. I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob. But I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for... I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots, and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. No, just because I needed to have water before six o'clock. They said, don't have anything after six. We'll get up at 5.50 then, like you were planned to. Don't you have five minutes, minutes sleeping. Don't take ten minutes to have water, though, does it? Well, why did you say 5.50 in the first place? Because then the it first... tricks me head, doesn't it? Going, oh, I had an extra five minutes. Tricks me head. Because then it tricks me head. <laughs> it. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet, so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals, though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? It's, it's always hot. It's always like 90 degrees. There's no air. Is that to make you drink water? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there's an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> he was just of that age where he didn't care. <laughs> just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital. Leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors, uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something. He's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like, that's. <laughs> Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen and that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Right, well, yeah, after that, uh, went back in. Um, Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so that was on the other night. Uh, I and, thought it was uh, with your lodger. So, um, and she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> she said, right, come on. Let's, uh, I just can't put up with this. It was like two o'clock in the morning. So we, we left the flat and what have you. Uh, got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. That is cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could On the way to the pain. hospital. So, uh, he's always not an ambulance driver. Did you explain that to where you no, were going? I, I was in that sort of thing where you just can't be bothered. Do you know what I mean? It was oh, in a sweat and stuff. It came back with a scratch card and some barbecue <laughs> briquettes. <yeah. laughs> so anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's alright, yeah. Um, so I go in and there's like, I don't know if you've been in like A and E at like you know, half two in the morning. Oh. It's just depressing. Fluorescent light doesn't help because it makes everyone look iller than they actually are. So, uh, in there, there was uh, a woman who was just sat there crying. She wasn't holding onto any part of her body. She was just sat there whinging. And when you're feeling bad, you've got that going on. So you just want to tell her to shut up. <laughs> there was a fella who was, like, moped over in a wheelchair. That's someone I just chucked in. Moped over? <laughs> it looked like somebody had just sort of found him and wheeled him in. Yes. Who's the guy moped over? <laughs> so this, this gay fella came through. How did you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A he doctor, was, you mean? No, he was like a, he was a nurse. Right. And he, he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got As you mentioned in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it. That. Of course you'd let him do it, he's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh, hello, and he said, yeah, let's pop that, I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> but, but what I mean is, that night, I, I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> oh, it's just weird, isn't it, how your body just goes, let him get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you, when when you're in that much pain, and you need And a, they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. They uh, in, gave me some morphine. And we sort of head caved in again like last time. And then the pain went. But anyway, um, just turns out that I, I'd had a load of, like, blood clots in the bit from my kidney to my bladder. And that was acting as a sort of a stone again. No, it's just, so that's it's just what... a scab, isn't it, where it's curing it? So. No, but all the work, when they blew up the kidney, they blew up the kidney four times its normal size. So there was no hiding place for the stone. Yeah. So when they did that, it caused a lot of blood. It must have ripped the sides of it and stuff. And then that blood was in the kidney and it went down the pipe and blocked it up a little bit. And that's the pain that I had. It was sort of... had problems getting through all this thick blood that they caused. So, uh, the weirdest thing that happened when I was in there, right? Uh, the, the morning, like, after I'd had the morphine and what have you, right? I slept pretty well. But I woke up and they... you have, like, a telly for your own bed that, you, that you're allowed to use if you pay for it, right? So, so the glow from that woke me up because they come on at about ten past seven, and the telly's in front of your head. Right? <laughs> so you're getting this glow, and you're going, "Oh, what's that now?" And uh, I looked at it, and all it had on written on it is, uh, "Carl uh, received bad news about your father." Right? And yeah. I was like, "Is this what they do now? Because it's such a big hospital that they just text you <laughs> sort of news to your bed." And I, I was kind of like. What's, like I say, it was early, it was ten past seven or whatever. Thinking, what's, what's going on? I, I didn't have my mobile, Suzanne took that. And I was looking at it, I read it again, I thought, Does, it might come up with more, like, what's up with him? <laughs> Turns out it was just a review for Neighbours. It just tells you... <laughs> it tells you what's on the telly that day. And there's some fella in Neighbours who's called Carl, whose dad went bad. <laughs> So that sort of woke me up a bit. I had a bit of a shock then. It was kind of like, so I was wide awake at like quarter past seven in the morning because my heart went a bit fast because I thought something had happened to me down. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled My Ward. All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, a, I don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience. Trauma. A trauma, yeah. I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. In my ward. It's called My Ward. Me, a Chinese fella, and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. 
he seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. But when I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fellow wasn't Chinese, he was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in your ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like it. I imagine a lot of people make that I like same it because you know why? It's like he even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left he left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. It's pretty honest. Yeah. So, you know, you've done quite quite a few bits there from the diary, right? The other week you were saying a diary to sort of be famous and what have you, it's got to have a big event in it. That's a big event in my life, right? Mm. Peeps did a diary that had big events in it. You said about the fire on Pudding Lane. I had a kidney stone here. You write about puddings you've had. So, is that now, is that as big as, is, is that a proper diary thing? It's but, a proper diary anyway. I think personally, the five or six pages you've written about your ill health are genuinely interesting. And I'm sure, in years to come, people, it will be an interesting evocation of the NHS in this modern age and how it is, what it's uh, like to be in hospital. What other diaries are out there? Well, a lot of them are fictional, of course, Bridget Jones and the like. There are lots of memoirs, but, but to publish I, but I a whole diary, why. I mean, you can well, get... Well, the, the two most famous d diaries, I'd have thought, was Peeps and Anne Frank. But yeah. Kenneth Williams' diaries were published after his death. Many uh, celebrity diaries have been published. Alec Guinness, people like that. And is that just their last year? Or did they do it when they were doing a lot? Because oh, if yeah. they're old and sort of not working well, a diary doesn't, isn't that good. Well, often the, the moments, you know, prior to their passing are some of the most interesting. You see their, their final thoughts and final days. Yeah, but are they just, you say different things when you're ill. When I was on that table about to go under and you're thinking this might be it, different thoughts on the world. Do you know what I mean? Different priorities. What's the most profound thing that you thought that you know it was because of your illness? Um. Just as I went under, the last thing I said to this woman was, oh, you look different with a hat on. And, <laughs> and... Oh, you look different with a hat on? Yeah, it was a woman who gave me the injection, and she'd been round to the bed beforehand, sort of saying, right, you're allergic to this, can you eat strawberries? And I was a bit like, why are you asking me that? And she went, well, no, a lot of people are allergic to strawberries. And I was saying, but is there any trace of strawberries in the stuff? And she's like, no, it's just that a lot of people are... And I said, well, no, I, I eat them. And then she's like, what about fish? And I said, I like some. I, I haven't had them all. And, uh, <laughs> and then she turned to Suzanne at that point and said, what, do you know of anything you can't eat? She sort like of said... A, like, like turning to the mother? Yeah, when the child can't answer. And, but she, she was, this was this woman, and she didn't have a hat on or anything. And then when I went down there, I didn't realise it was the same woman until I was lying there and she started to inject me. And I just said, oh, you look different with that on. And then I went out, and, uh, and I, when I woke up, um, the woman sort of came round and just sort of said, oh, it's weird, that, that was the last thing, like you said. And uh, that made me think that could have been my last, you know, like fight them on the beaches or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that could have been my little thing. You look different with a hat on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> oh, God. In its own way, it's quite wise. People do look different with hats on. I think his last words would be something like, can this kill you? Yeah. Suzanne, can you drink bleach? <laughs> Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that they found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. Talk rubbish. So, so they're always pushing there. It's, it's also pushed. measured against sea level. It's not measured about when you get, otherwise they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. 
If the, 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 no, the peak is measured at, at against the day, sea though, level, does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's what, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun, he's <laughs> not going to go. Oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else though that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there, and someone got near the top, and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag. I had to go back. No, the, their hand hit the bit of rock, and it went like ding. I'm like what's that? Went, ding ding. Put another hand up. Ding ding. Piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. <laughs> Someone's been tipping. Well, oh, <laughs> right. Up average. Okay. There's, the council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're I'm not, not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days. <laughs> and it may, you may die. But just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused you've confused a few things there because I think the the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there, yeah. and everyone said, "I don't understand how's the piano doing up here." And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged a, oh, dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance. Yeah. But thought I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't you know bloody tipping or aliens or anything. My dad used to bury things in the garden because the council used to charge for like washing machines and and mangles and and cookers uh, and pets so i'm just thinking in millions of years when they dig that up they think that dogs used to cook and <laughs> yeah, like do yeah. washing up and things yeah i love the idea of burying utensils i think of the hole big enough to to bury a washing machine or a mangle so whoever kind of bought that house after your your yeah, dad they got a little treating store yeah lovely little um themed rockery <laughs> yeah the weather is weird this morning. One minute it's sunny, then it's thundering, then hailstones, then it's sunny again. People will be saying it's global warming. I don't really know what that means. Everything's changing all the time, innit? I wonder if years ago, when we first came out of the sea and we walked on land upright, did people blame the weather for that? Good point, huh? No, no. It's so stupid. Yeah, ridiculous. We didn't come out of the sea and instantly start walking around like humans and go, oh, can you believe it? We were swimming around, we were having a whale of a time. Do you know what? I blame the weather. No, but... Now they would, if that happened. It's the same way, say like, um, evolution, right? We talk about it a lot, right? Mm. Now, years ago, I don't know how it happened, but some whale had legs, <laughs> right? Yeah. This is how it started. Before he was a whale, yeah. Whales started off with legs, they that's right. They were rolling about on, on the beach front, right? Anyway, it worked out that, you know, they didn't like it or whatever. Get back in. Now, say, if that happened again now, Right. Say if someone's born, and they say they always say don't they check for lumps and stuff. Right. Make sure you haven't got any lumps. Now say. What, I, sorry. Sorry. Who says this? And what? What? What's the, what? Like magazines and doctors and that. What, always say, what, what, when you're first born. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but Ar all, arbitrary decision. Yeah, that answer. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Go all, on. all I mean is now. Say if like our evolution thing is kind of like the next level is for us to have three legs because we're, we're that busy on the world now. But it doesn't work like that. Why would it work like that? Because that's nature, isn't it? It deals with it. If people are getting stressed out and getting achy legs a lot, because they're going, well, what you're doing there is you're using two legs like you've got three. You need another one. But the problem is... No. Say if, finish. Say if someone grew a leg now, because it's like, well, we need three legs. Yeah, but... The, the Let him finish. Okay. People would go, oh, I've found a lump, right? And the doctor would go, oh, whip that out. Now, that could be a third leg that's growing. But, Carl, evolution doesn't work like that. It does Some, work suddenly like that. something isn't born with a perfectly formed third leg that can be passed on. I know it's a lump. It starts off like a lump and and if you left it alone, yeah. it would eventually over a bit of time. Uh, no, over many many millions of years. Yeah. But but it grows as another leg, but we're not letting that happen anymore. It also wouldn't happen. D d d limbs don't work like that either. They do if you keep putting extra pressure on two legs. Carl, you you <laughs> Honestly, what you imagine the process of evolution and natural selection to be is, I, I, I it's beyond me, it's No, incredible. but it depends what surra whatever your surroundings are, that's what you change to, isn't it? Like the... Well, the, you don't, you, we don't change to it, you're either selected or you're not. So, uh, uh, 
what happens is there's a genetic throw up. So something's born, you know, a llama's born with a slightly longer neck. And if that gets, you know, the leaves that are slightly higher up and it survives, it lives longer, it passes on its genetic material. Um, uh, soon, if that works, now over millions and millions of years, uh, that they're the dominant species, a new species uh, uh, um, is thrown up with a slightly longer neck, uh, uh, and so on and so on, and it's yeah. gradual. It's just a slight no, advantage. No, sometimes it happens quicker than that. There's been animals that have had eyes and then they go, oh, they don't need them, they go in the space of a fortnight. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> what no, what are you talking about? There's a lizard somewhere where it's roaming about in the dark and it used to have eyes, and they used to be like, what, why have we got eyes and that? What's the point in having these? Because we're keeping them open. And they were getting more tired. Because at the end of the day, if your eyes are open, do you know what I mean? Blind people can stay up longer than a someone with eyes. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. I want to follow this through to its natural right. conclusion. Keep right. going. Keep going. There is no. There is nothing to do. Right. Uh, right. The first signs of you getting tired, you go, "Oh, my eyes. I can hardly keep them open." Yeah. So a blind person doesn't get that because they can roam about with them short like so that. So they never sleep, do they, so, blind people? Well, they sleep, but not. They don't need as much because their eyes aren't stinging. All guessing, all guesswork, and all nonsense. I mean, all nonsense. Well, hang on, fair enough. Okay, let's ex even if we accept that to be true of blind people, what what was happening with the lizards? The lizards were going, I can't believe this is mad. We don't need our eyes. We're down underground. What's the point? Over. Jeff, Bill, let's just no longer use eyes. Well, they were just like, um, in a way, it's better if we keep our eyes shut to keep the soil out and stuff. Um, and then over time, they were like, oh, my eyes are stuck. Like the time <laughs> when- For uh, a fortnight, you said. No, 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 no. Well, it's over hundreds of millions of years. And the other thing is, it's not the case that there's no will to evolution. What happened was that they, a, a, a blind one had no disadvantage. So he was selected um, uh, uh, better than one with eyes that maybe would find it irritating or, or, or getting in the way. You know, just like um, a, a snake, it's not a disadvantage for a snake to lose its legs because it, it, it's selected and and then it's an advantage because they, they, they can get into places that, they, you know, where legs would get in the way. Like I've said before, right, you see like a little fella, like a, a midget or a dwarf or something. Right. Who's to say that that isn't the way we should be? Do you mean, how do we know that... Well, everybody looks at them and goes, oh, look, little fella. But really, it doesn't matter. If, it, if we were all like that, the world would be a better place, because it's bigger, so there's more to see. Whereas for us, we're, we're getting bigger all, all the time. The world isn't growing, so there's less to see for us. So for a midget, the world is brilliant. So I'd say it'd be good if we do go backwards as opposed to forwards. Instead of us getting bigger all Steve, the time... Do you want a cup of tea? No, I'm not sure, mate. I'll leave you to it. Um, do you know what I mean, though? Have we got? We haven't got any. Have we, we've only got instant coffee as well. No, yeah, I'm but like pop out for something. But what I mean is, they always say well, like I'll the, make it. You the body's. It. No, no, thanks, mate. But tell me when he's finished. I'm oh, just right, saying no, no. the body's getting bigger, and instead of going forward, no then, sugar for me, thanks. Oh. Do you want milk, though? Yeah, yeah, milk. Forget it. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And they'll be what? They'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they? Like, I'll tell you just... what, though, right? Now, I'm getting worried now because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean, though? Like a proper paranoid sort of it, one of those people that assume are going to live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the. You know, and yeah. Suzanne's <laughs> having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what's, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, of think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? They stick them in a lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone. 
right? And they're saying how these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. Did this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? Anyway, it's unbelievable. Uh, is it Ted? <laughs> he went, what? <gasps> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ, I came it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around and germs are... Eating chocolate. <laughs> that's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> Went to bed and chatted about food to Suzanne. I said it would be best if our bodies could be run on something like coal. That way you wouldn't get fat people because you wouldn't be eating for enjoyment. You'd just be eating to give you energy. Suzanne said, why do you always take the nice things out of life? Because sometimes to think about the future, you, you, it's not going to be all good, is it? Look at the way we have to do things now that we sort of go, oh, I'm sick of this. But they do it for your own good. But you try and oh. change the laws of the universe. Based on arbitrary whims. No, but yeah. we're always eating stuff. That's one of the things we do now, isn't it? As soon as we find a new creature, like that frog, that's been hidden away for like millions of years, you get someone who go, I wonder if we can eat that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's it, everything that's walking on the world, they sort of see what powers it's got. Uh, what but, powers it's got? No, like, if it can jump far, um, you know, is it poisonous? Can you get anything out of it to save people? And yeah. then, can we eat it? They're the three things that they do with a new frog. <laughs> Any creature. Is that what are they? Can it jump fast? Yeah. Is it poisonous? Poison in it that is... you can use to get rid of illnesses. Yeah. Can you eat it? Because What's the more first more... three questions anyone asks, do it they? It seems to be the way, because you look at menus and that, how they're getting bigger and bigger now, and that's only because we're finding more and more species of stuff. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, if you look at some stuff on a menu, that, that octopus you eat. At some point, that would have gone through the list of, right, what does it do? What's it got in it? What does that ink do? What's it taste like? Can it jump? Can it, whatever, well, they've done tests on it, haven't they, when we said about it being in a, getting in a jam jar or something. Yeah. So it's all part of it. Everything's been tested. Everything. But I think, what the thrill is that the first you hear of a newfangled food, do you think that uh, in ancient civilization they didn't, they didn't do this, they didn't, Try an oyster, or, or spear a fish, or yeah, because they, eat they a wasn't maggot. that much other stuff knocking about at that time. Right, but we've got loads of stuff, so why are we messing about with some new frog? It's all like people just like showing off, don't they? Leave the frogs, let them get busy, and have loads of them. Eat the chickens. When we run out of them, move on to the frog, or whatever. But why, why have all this on the go? Do you know what I mean? It just makes it. I, I hate going out for a meal now because it's like, what, what are you having? Oh, I'm sick of it. Look at it all. <laughs> And then you're forced into people going, oh, have you had the new frog? <laughs> no, I don't want it. I'm happy with chicken. That's what I mean. I... Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Have you ever been out, Rick, and someone's been trying to force frog on you? Never. I've never been forced frog in my life. Although I did go for a meal once with Carl. We went there and uh, he had the Orient hors d'oeuvres, uh, I recommended, right? Um, and uh, he was trying to get this little oyster, right, off the shell, right? And he was going to get stuck to its house, right? And uh, I looked round and his eyes were watering and he was choking and he was drinking water. I said, what? And he said, I hope that. And it was a big blob of wasabi, Oof. right? And I said, why did you put it all in at once? He went, he said, I thought it was a mushy pea. <laughs> why would they put one mushy pea? Was it hardcore, the wasabi? It felt like my head was caving in. <laughs> <laughs> that was just Ricky squeezing it, wasn't it? Between courses. So with that though is uh, you know hot food, yeah. why you get addicted to really hot food is the pain is actually your it's killing taste buds and then endorphins are releasing the brain like you know a morphine derivative to to uh, sort of go it's all right oh calm the pain so you actually get ad addicted to that sort of you know what so happens why why would you want to kill your taste buds but new ones come back well yeah I think they, you, yeah I think you straight away well I don't, I don't know how long it takes I. Don't, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure. No, it's just, is that the chef sort of going, oh, I'm serving some right rubbish tonight. Give him some of that kusabi. <laughs> kusabi! Oh, God, and Tonto! <laughs> oh, God! Back to the diary. At lunchtime, I went to a local cafe and had an omelette. An old woman, who was about 70-ish, was in there eating pizza. It didn't look right. No. 
I know what you mean there, actually. Old people eating pizza seems a bit weird. What about an old Italian lady eating pizza? Would that be right? Uh, no, I'd expect her to have lasagna. <laughs> 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 told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. <laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried it could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. Uh, there's so many elements in this. There's a, there's a woman who can read... She used to read that mind. again. Read that again. Okay, we're gonna have an instant uh, replay no, now. Any what, psychologist listening, is. or psychiatrist, or just well, anyone, listen to this. What Carl's put in his diary. Okay, Steve, away you go. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago, when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them... Um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind reading and stuff, so right. you get a, a recording, a recording of, the, of it. Uh, yep. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried, and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was it looking what worried? What do you mean pick up vibes? Depends what you mean by pick up vibes. Do dogs pick up loads of vibes and stuff. I read the other day how they can tell if someone's got cancer and Well, that. they can, they, well, yeah, that's so the, the science behind that. They, they can smell the different... Uh, yeah. the, uh, at a cellular level, yeah, you know, so it's, the same it's sort like of thing. seventy times. Dry. But no, no, they can't go. The, the dog wouldn't even know you're an idiot. The dog, uh, the even dog was sort of looking weird and stuff. It and knew. She, she it was, knew. She but, was looking at me. But were they looking? I'm not being funny. Were they looking at the roundness of your head? Do you no, think? They were just just looking at me, and I was sort of panicking a bit. And the more that I was thinking, she's reading my mind. I was thinking she she knows that I know that she's reading my mind. So I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on a beach. <laughs> he remembers what he was thinking! No, just so she thought, oh hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> oh, so you thought she'd go, oh no, hang on, I'm getting it all tangled up, I've got a cross line here. But why were you worried that she was reading your mind? Because you weren't thinking of anything, un, you know, no, unsafe. Oh, no, don't, don't, oh, please. No, 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 I'm just trying to get in his it, mind. It his doesn't rationale. work, Carl. No, 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 no one no, can his... read your mind. No, but wait, wait, what I mean is, even if, you know, let's assume that you thought she could read your mind, why did you think that there was anything wrong with finding out what you were thinking? Because she knew, she'd have known that you knew that she could read minds. So she, if she read your mind and all you were thinking was she can read my mind, she'd think what? Of he course, knows that I can if read my she mind. really could read your mind, she's yeah, going. There's Carl there trying to make me uh, think that it's the dog. I know he's thinking of the dog. No, but when you sort of uh, try and think of normal things, you think of mental things, don't you? So I was like, Whoa, hold well on, this let go on, go on. No, what I just mean, like, you're going, oh, God, I best not watch what I'm thinking then. What it were you thinking? Tell, what tell were you me thinking? some of the mental things No, there was loads of think. things that was in there. Like, there was an old woman who used to annoy me in there, who used to give me socks all the time. <laughs> and Socks? Socks. She used oh, to always socks. make loads of socks and she'd be bringing them in. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I sort of said, look, I'm sick of your socks, she kept bringing them in all the time. And they had, like, pictures on and that. I didn't want socks with pictures on. So, um... So I used to, I might have been s sort of stood there going, oh, there she is with the socks, I'm sick of her. Now, if she can sense that, she'll go over to her and go, watch him, he stop bringing him socks, socks yeah. or whatever. No one can read minds, no one can contact the dead. Say like me, right, if I sometimes come in the, in the room and that and I'm fed up, you go, oh, Carl's fed up, I haven't even said anything. So it's because, just that, but that's because you look like a miserable bastard. Yeah, yeah and we can we know what that means. We're we're, we're human, and we understand right. facial so movements. So it's a bit like moves. that. It's a bit like that. It's a level down from no, that. No, 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 no. She should be able to read your mind if you're locked in a safe, and she doesn't know who you are, and she doesn't know whether there's someone in there. No, that's what that, the double that, blind test that is. That would never work, would it? Because that means she'd never get arrest. 
That's like uh, so you're Gala. making up the rules. You're making up the rules. Oh no, the thing is, that's what these people do. Go. Oh no, I have to hold your hand. Oh, I have to. You have to write it down. Well, why? Why do you? It's the same as these mediums that contact the dead. They go. Oh, I'm getting someone. Just ask him who he is. Just give us his full name and address. It's ridiculous. I know the fact that these these dead people give him cryptic clues. Ask him about the uh, toaster. What's your name? What's your name? Can't say my name. Might be an uncle. Just give me your fucking name. Back to Carl's diary. Friday the thirty first. I read that some fella had been having an affair. His wife found out, so when he was asleep, she superglued his knob to his stomach, one of his bollocks to his leg, and glued his arse cheeks together, then chucked him out. If Suzanne did that, I would definitely not get back with her. Saying that, I would have woke up if someone was putting superglue on me arse. I'm quite a light sleeper. Is that what she did, is it? Yeah, that's why I'm a bit cautious about wearing earbuds every night. The, uh, plunge things. <laughs> Earbuds, earbuds. Right. So that's a, no, so that's not a called right. Plunge things. He's like he makes up words. They taught a chimp to talk, and the chimp had a better grasp of language after about a few years than Carl. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's why I won't wear buds and plunge things. <laughs> I phoned him up the other day, uh, uh, he, went, he went, oh, just tried out those new earplugs that mould to your ear, you can't hear a thing, except your own voice. And I went, oh, right, they're good, aren't they? He went, yeah. He said, it's weird hearing your own voice, isn't it, because you're hearing it as other people hear it. I went, no, you're not. He went, you are. He said, you don't usually hear your own voice, because usually when you talk, you're talking over it. <laughs> woke up at 9.55am. As Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about... <laughs> Just think of him opening his eyes and looking at oh, Okay, all right. Okay, so he's he's he he opens his eyes. He looks at Suzanne. She looks at him. What question, Rick? Do you think he immediately asks his girlfriend? Go on. What question do you oh, think? I Have can't. a quick guess. Um, uh, um, am I dreaming? I woke up. I said to my girlfriend, "Did I tell you about?" <laughs> I woke up. I looked at Suzanne. She looked at me. I said, "Did I tell you about the immune system?" <laughs> tell you about the immune system. <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, God. I was thinking that. Springing into action. He zips up his eyes alive. <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up, Carl. Put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. I was talking to Suzanne about how it's odd that Sundays are meant to be the day of rest. I thought God was meant to be born on a Sunday. Or was it the seventh day that he finished making the world? Imagine how good the world could have been if he'd given it an extra day. Sometimes <laughs> it's best to give yourself a deadline, though, so you don't faff about. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Suzanne. She was leaning back on the bench with her eyes shut with the sun on her face. I never got an answer to my question. Pretending to be, to be asleep. asleep. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> No! What do you mean? Well, ah! he, had his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Now what? then, would you walk, w how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically walking forwards? I or, reckon I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! He solved it again! <laughs> He's thought it through! <laughs> oh. Got home and read my magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news, that. That was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. The story used the description to describe it. There was a picture. I think it was a fairly decent description. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look alright if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders. Cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, Cockroach I mean... men, spider men, what are you talking about? I haven't had a normal conversation with you for a year. No. It's getting worse, I think. I think I think it's because you've left and you've got too much time on your hands and you live in your head for sort of like maybe eight hours a day and then you offload when someone calls you or when you call me or, or Suzanne gets the, the brunt of it. But, I mean, I, 
I mean, I I don't know. I really would like to. And a, a nice, I still think he's brilliant, right? But I would like to get a little psychiatrist in just mm. to. Would you mind seeing no, a psychiatrist? No, it's just there's nothing wrong. These are all ideas, aren't they? You look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They 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 have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff powers g going about? It's all these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men or or whatever. That's no, what you, you mean. said if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could the, use where's them. Where's the? You've left a big bit out. But when that one-inch cockroach becomes a six-foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well. But I don't think it's getting the most out of them. Cockroaches can live without a head. Uh -huh. for... Could they still sort out the rubbish if they've got no heads? They could, couldn't they? Uh, Except they, if they were, because you know you want to use them as builders and dustmen, they couldn't whistle at pretty girls, could no, they? No, but they wouldn't be doing that job, they're just doing the bins. Okay. It's ants that are doing the building. Okay, I'm sorry. And are they getting up early? Are they disturbing you? They don't you? sleep, do they? But then they get you up even earlier. You hate it when the builders get you up at seven, then go to the breakfast. Yeah, but it wouldn't go on as long, would it? Because the ants would be working hard. So it'd probably be one day of madness, but then it'd be finished. As opposed to builders just stood about whistling, doing nothing, going on for months. And is this ant six foot? Uh, no. No. About three. Three foot. So how many of them are there? About, uh, about 30 of them. And what do they look like? Are they just a giant ant with um, a- I had that on. Um, just get on with it. I mean, it'd be weird for a bit, but with anything you get, you get used to seeing but things, Carl, don't you? again- this isn't an idea, it isn't a theory, you can't, you can't put this into practice because it doesn't exist. I am just saying It's like, it's... Well, well, I mean, you wishing for ant builders is the same as you wishing that you didn't have to do any building and your house was just perfect, or you could just wish for it. What's the difference? Why go through this elaborate... <coughs> but th th what I'm saying Weird, is that it? your wish is... It, 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 you're, you're taking... You're not taking shortcuts. You see, it's the same people who goes, Oh, I wish I could go back in time and put a thousand pounds on the Grand National. What you mean is you wish you had a million pounds. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. don't worry about the time travel bit and put in a... Do you wish you were rich? Yeah. It's like... So you wish you didn't have to have builders round. That's what you're wishing for. So this elaborate thing of getting a three-foot ant with a hard hat... Today I got an innovations catalogue. I thought I'd keep it because I like the stuff they sell in it. Brackets, one big slipper. What's that, one big slipper? It's just if you don't go out much. Uh, <laughs> but you don't like slippers. No, I know, but th th I think they're a good good idea because they're just there to keep your feet warm. But why one big? Why not two sim smaller ones? So you can walk around? Yeah, one big slipper's just making it painful It's more sort of roomy, isn't it? Why it's do you comfort. think that's a good invention, one big slipper? How is that better just than two smaller slippers? Because the problem is with slippers, right, you're, you've already said how you nip across the road in them, right, so you muck them up and you have to buy some more. There's no way you'll be nipping to the shops in that one big one. That will always stay where it should be, by the sofa next to the telly. And you go, right, I'm in for the night now, where's my slipper? <laughs> <laughs> but can I just put my feet inside a, a cushion cover or something? What? If you want, but it's, it's only cheap, why not get one? <laughs> you're right. They're, they're only cheap, why not get one? But then, Carl, why not get one big glove? If you're not going out, right, just get one big glove. You don't have to do anything. Just one big glove. Pop your hands in one big glove. I'm not going out. Gloves, you have to go out and touch stuff. Just one big glove. Why, 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 why? Well, yeah, why bother putting trousers on? You've got to put uh, legs in both. Why not just wear a skirt? Yeah. Well, well, put, pop a skirt on, yeah. Just put on a lady's skirt or a lady's dress. It's one piece, isn't it, then? Yeah. Just pop around in there. One big monocle. Skirt. Don't wear glasses. Wear one big monocle. Yeah. I mean, it's stupid having two gloves. Two gloves, two slippers is mental. Anyway, um, I had a good sleep last night, so much so that I woke up before my legs did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means! This has happened before when I was younger. We used to have a phone in the bathroom so that if anyone called and we were on the toilet, you'd still be able to be available. My bedroom was next to the bathroom and the phone rang one morning. My mum and dad were at work and my brother and sister were out somewhere and the phone woke me up. So I jumped out of bed to answer it but the bottom half of my body was still asleep and I fell to the floor. <laughs> it's horrible. Has that ever happened to you? I, well, hang on. I had to crawl for a bit and reached for the phone. It was a fella selling some bread to my dad for the shop. By the end of the call, my legs were working again. <laughs> but it's a weird sensation. What shop? My mum and dad used to have a butty shop. Somewhere. Did they? But the thing is, uh, just on the floor, top half, I had to sort of crawl, carry my weight, and my legs were just like they weren't there. 
It's really, really weird. You mean you woke up with two dead legs, two pins and needles, mm. knee legs? Are you sure you, were, you weren't wearing just one big slipper? <laughs> <laughs> You've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now I've done now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps. Well, is what you're thinking? Well, isn't I'm it? not going to say that until I know. But what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer no. predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary, which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? What did he say in it? Well, it's again more because it's both well written and it's also an amazing insight. A social into document a social as well. Document, yeah, yeah. It's a social document. I mean, that yours is a social document, but. It, it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips in a cafe and seeing a ladybird, which, you know... But that's that's today's living. That's well, his dis yes, but his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most... Yeah, it's but best we haven't had for. one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. The ladybird <laughs> happened, right? I wrote it down. He, he was just lucky.